Go time. A little nervous. The uh, shallow water alarm on the plotter went off a second ago. And now the boat's out of the water. That is gonna, that's not right. That's not okay. All right, the next question is, right. is it straight? <laughs> so much room for activities. Just went pop. Well, there we go, that rumor is true. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. I'm Kiara, and this is Adam. A few years ago, we walked away from our life on land to pursue travel and adventure aboard our floating home, the Millennial Falcon. Last year saw us improving ourselves and the boat whilst we tackled our first Atlantic circuit. Join us as we come full circle back to the Caribbean where we'll commence preparations for our next big challenge. Last episode on Sailing Millennial Falcon. We're here! We're really, really here! Oh. <laughs> here we go with spins! My second chance of standing up. <laughs> <laughs> And we're hauling out in two days' time and we need to be mobile. Tomorrow morning we're going straight in there at 9 o'clock, disassembling the mast so it can get us out of the water. Our boat looks very naked. Tying up loose ends, if you'll pardon the pun. Okay, today is haul out day. We are upping anchor and our plan is to go through the bridge that opens up at 8.30, so it's about quarter past eight now, and uh, immediately tie up to the dock, which will be on our port side. A little nervous. It's mainly the bridge that's making us nervous, but we've examined it, we've looked at it, it should be completely fine. Would you like to provide an update on the decks? Oh, the chart here is like, oh, there's one foot of water over there, which I highly doubt. There's five feet there, which is not good, and there's eight feet there, and I'm reading nine, ten feet. No point. We're going for a haul out, just in case. <laughs> you know, it sounds bad, but I did think that. I'm like, you know what, whatever happens, just got to get the boat out of the water. We'll deal with the rest later. Everything else is future Adam's problem. <laughs> Alright, i got a red light on the on the bridge. So, so there's a traffic light system here. Um, and we already know from, uh, from watching it that the outgoing boats go first. And then the incoming boats, us, will go second. So we can already see that there's a red light. And then now we're going to lift the, the bridge. We see another mast on the other side. So we need to wait for that boat to come through. And then it'll be our turn to go in through. Oh. All right, go time. How do you feel? <laughs> it's just like, please, 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 you're trying to stay as close as you can to the wall that the bridge isn't on. And I can't see up, so I'm like, ooh, just trusting Kiara. <laughs> oh, please, 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 please. There's a definite trust exercise there. <laughs> All right, so we just need to hover for a few more minutes until uh, they're ready to accept us. Then all good, all go. And then there's the second panic of when we have to tie up to a dock. <laughs> no, it's just a plastic, uh, a plastic dock, so it shouldn't be too bad. Just like the first day coming out of the bay. Coming out of that coming out of Port Charlotte or wherever we were. What depth do you think? Nine feet now, it's getting better. But we had it, the uh, shallow water alarm on the plotter went off a second ago. It was like less than six. Alert, alert. Six four. Um, four. Six five? Six six, that's fine. Six the alarm went off again, but that's okay. I think we just kind of have to go to where those boats are now and just make our way. What's that saying? Uh, do something that scares you every day. Well, this has scared us for about three years, thinking about bringing our boat into this lagoon. So we are ticking that box for the day. I suppose actually some of you might be wondering why we're a little bit nervous coming into this lagoon. Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, St. Martin got hit pretty hard by Hurricane Irma and on the French side where we are now, they haven't really been as good about, um, well, dredging, first of all, dredging the channel, but also getting rid of all the wrecks that had sunk in the lagoon. So we're not only looking out for shallow water, we're also looking out for wrecks here as well. And as you can see, like there are still plenty around us. 
So yeah, this is the reason why we're a little nervous coming in here. But from the sounds of it, we aren't hitting any more shallow water, like no more shallow water alarms. Still like nine foot, but it's good to know actually that we can get in this way. And there are plenty of boats here. I always assumed though that they'd gone in from the Dutch side, which was a little better at removing their sunken boats from the bottom of the lagoon side on the Dutch side. So it's good to know that we can get on the French side now. We finally made it into the lagoon, all the times we've been here, and we finally had cause to come in and run the gauntlet. I think, the, to be fair, the channel has, uh, the bridge typically hasn't worked very well when we've been here, um, and it's running like clockwork at the moment, and the, a lot of the wrecks have been cleared away, so I feel confident that we can make it through, and we have, we made it through. The depth alarm went off twice, but we didn't touch bottom, so I feel like it might have just been a little, I don't know, false alarm or haven't missed it by that much, or perhaps even just grass, like turtle grass. But for the most part, we saw seven, eight feet. So that's good, that's totally fine. So yeah, cool, next time we come back here, I have no qualms about sort of nipping in and out of the lagoon when it's bumpy out in the bay. Yeah, it's nice. butcher's bill on what broke during our passage. In addition to fixing up these things, we also had two main reasons for hauling out. One, to unstep the mast to take a look at our compression post. Number two, removing and replacing the propeller shaft. I missed that. I missed the actual haul out. I was uh, busy filling forms in in the office, and now the boat's out of the water. <laughs> Seemed to have gone smoothly though, which is good. I missed all the good stuff there. The actual haul out. Look at this. How bad is this? This is terrible. Look at the play in these blades. Oh, look at how. Look. That is gonna. That's not right. That's not okay. No, that's not. Interesting. The next morning we got straight to work, embracing our new yard life. So I've spent all morning upside down in the bilge. So we've managed to get the Sigma drive off, which is essentially the shaft side of the coupling. Here that took some doing, but you know, it's sort of built to come off, which is great. Hasn't aged too badly, which I'm happy about. Uh, the stuffing box separated the two halves. That didn't come quite as easy, but it went. It needs a clean up and a bit of a spruce. Managed to get all of the uh, waxy braid out of the boat side of the stuffing box. Six of those came out. And now the shaft is free to move forward and backwards. So I've discussed this at length with many people and the majority seem to think that you can get the shaft past the skeg without needing to sort of, or, or just by sort of bending it a little. Like my, my friend John, John Kreshman was like, you know, I really respect his opinion. He's like, do you know what? I reckon you'll be able to just bend it past. One side will be better than the other and you'll be able to get it through. There's no way that they put the shaft in, you know, after before building the boat. And I highly doubt that jacking the engine and going under the engine and then out, you know, into the boat is the way it was intended to be done. So we're going to try it that way. Um, the intention is to replace the shaft anyway, so coming out sort of 
okay to be a little bit destructive. The main concern is that if we bend it you know, in, in an elastic fashion coming out, that's fine. Um, as long as we don't permanently bend it, because I want to do that putting the new one back in. Um, and if, oh, heaven forbid, you bend it trying to get it in the boat and then it's bent and you're right back where you started. Uh, so I don't know, I, you know, from an engineering standpoint, as long as you don't bend it past a certain point, it should, you know, it shouldn't be a permanent bend. And I suspect that will be the case. So that's the job now. We're going to go downstairs and try to gently persuade it to come out. Which way does I want to go? I reckon this way. Yeah, it's I think better. so. Easy. Really easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was significantly easier than I thought. Well, there we go. Geez, I, I honestly thought you'd be there for a while. Just pulling so did I. I was like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna have to bend it all the way back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just went. I reckon hot. that was about six inches or so. Yeah, of, that uh, much overlap, and then it just you yeah. could feel the moment that the the coupling end cleared the stuffing box, and it just went pop into the stern tube and had more room to work and it just came straight out after that. Well there we go, that rumour is true. It's easier on one side than go. the other. You can bend it. And even if you have a skeg, well, you not can, even, It's uh, not even a question past. of bending, it's like it's the slightest, the slightest Curve. little bit of yeah. push. You just give it a little bit of push past, you'd never damage it, anything doing that. God no. Alright, the next question is, right. is it straight? I mean, we'll, mm. like, there's no, if you could eyeball this and be like, yep, it's bent, then it would be so badly bent. Yeah, true. I don't think you'll be able to eyeball this and tell if it's... I do want to have someone check this for straightness anyway, but I'm like, see, this is an unnecessary expense. But it'd be nice to know if everything was normal um, or not. Don't know, I'll have to think about it. Well, I guess I'll see what they want. See how much it's going to cost me. If it's another, you know, if it's like 20 or 30 bucks or an hour's wage for the guy to put it on a lathe, turn it, run a bit of chalk along it, and tell me where it, you know, where it's bent. Well, I think that would be money well spent just for peace of mind. But if he wants, you know, hundreds of dollars, I don't know. After our speedy morning progress, we got to work on the second item of our haul out the compression post. <laughs> So much room for activities! <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you to bell that right back into my face. <laughs> Wait, are you going to play handball? Or are you just hit it, hit it with your hand like... Maybe you just like... Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> <Ouch. laughs> we'll put the floor back on. Thoughts, comments, suggestions? What, other than turning the, the Falcon into a strip club with its new pole? <laughs> um, I mean, the, the lounge is very well placed for it, and uh, yeah, it's the world's tiniest strip club. So, we actually haven't explained what we're doing here or why we're doing it. Uh, a little while ago, we discovered, not, not as a panic, but I, I was, what were we doing? Some wiring, I think? It was done, something. I was down in the bilge, was looking, looking at things, and I... Um, I noticed that the base of the compression post was like really rusty and gross and sort of had that flaky sort of wafer biscuit consistency that rusted metal gets when it's really had it. And uh, I cleaned it up and I was like, well, oh, I don't like this, I have to do something about it. And I put it on my mental list of things to worry about. Uh, and that was a year ago. And it's been fine, I've been keeping an eye on it. The weld is intact, it hasn't been aging and I've been cleaning it periodically and managing the water that's been getting in. The problem has been is that we're a deck stepped mast and we have thus have a compression post which is this um, and the water management well rather the cabling runs straight down the mast and into a little raised up snorkel and then down through the roof down into the compression post and exits stage left under the floor where it then runs back to the breaker board which is fine but what's been happening is water's been getting in the mast, tracking down the wiring, which at no point turns, you know, through like a candy cane or a snorkel or something, and thus it tracks straight down all the way through and pulls in the bottom of the compression post, um, which then rusts. On top of that, if you draw your attention to the top of the compression post, you'll note that it's a beautiful stainless steel plate and a stainless steel tube with a lovely stainless steel weld. If you draw your attention to the base of the compression post, 
you'll know that it is not a beautiful stainless steel plate. It is something that resembles mild steel, cast iron. I, I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. But it ain't stainless steel, that's for sure. Uh, and it's kind of glassed in to a... It's not even a box, it's just glassed into the floor. Um, which is fine, it's a super robust way to build it. It's the materials that I have a problem with. And I don't really want to go on like that. It, 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 it stresses me out. I found it. I can't in good conscience just kind of keep managing it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it out, clean it, inspect it, probably have it, probably rebuild the base and the box and then get a nice bit of stainless put on there and we'll deal with it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it right. So for now, we just got to get it out, have a look. This requires an update. There we go. We are post compression postless. Oh wow. It's gonna be fun getting it back in. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That's all right. I knew I knew that was gonna go. I have to rebuild the floor and build it up onto a box and then I'll I'll build it with a place to jack the roof so that we can get it back in. A bit of water getting through there. But we need that because it's a big hole in the roof. Okay.